<laughs> so we're out of the spring management phase and we're into honey production now. Really, we're managing the bees for the honey production. And how the honey comes in is how we manage the bees. So one of the big controversial subjects is um, time to time you hear people say, I've got bees, but I'm just not going to do honey this year. Well, I'm going to get into it, I'm going to get into it slowly. This, you know, the first year I'm just going to do the bees, see how they do. I'm not going to take it, I'm not going to do honey. Well, that'd be one. That would, that would, that would, that would be a good idea to do, but anybody just going to grab bees and hoping just to do bees this year and not worry about honey? Mm -hmm. uh, not take it? Well, no, I don't want to take it. Not managing it for honey production. I don't know how you can do that. That's exactly you can't the point. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not a call we can make. Well, you don't have no control over that. If you get the right number of bees at the right time, you're going to get the honey flow into your hive. If you choose not to put a box on to collect the honey, then your bees are going to go to the neighbour. Yeah. And then you're going to have a hive that most likely will not winter because by then it's too late. Well, I've got an extra. Deep on top, is that good enough? I should hope so. No, yeah, they just they don't need three. <laughs> no, I've, got, I've got two supers on each hive now. And they're busy yeah. in there? Yeah. And like I said, one one super is full. Did you find a couple or something? I do. I'm telling you. I've got, I've got a lot it, of clover. But it, it, does, it does bring to the point that I wanted to raise today that it's very different in every area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, we talk about canola. The canola can flower from the 20th of June until the 15th of July, and it could go on until the end of August, or it could be done by the end of August. Yeah. <coughs> so, you have to be ready, you have to watch. That's all there is to Yeah. You said clover is useless in this one. you got to have some heat, yeah. But if this guy's got honey coming in, it must be clover. Because no yeah, I have clover. There. Yeah. i got a lot of clover in yeah. the so. The sweet clover doesn't need as much heat. The sweet clover will do better, um, but the alfalfa especially, that needs, it needs a lot of heat. And alfalfa will actually grow really well even when it's raining. So as soon as it's, soon as it's, grow, like it's been growing for the last week and you think to yourself, oh, this is great, let's get some more weather than the bees can take it. All about 150 acres back here that have been cut. Oh. Yeah. They want to dry and they want to bring it in, yeah. Wow. So, just wait, please. Um, so one of our topics for tonight is excluders. Does anybody not use excluders as a habit? Yeah, have you had these before? Okay, and you didn't use an excluder, and you took honey off? What? And did you take honey off of these? No. Okay. Um, did you ever use, a, you, you use excluders? Yeah. No issues with excluders? Doesn't stop the bees going up? Not, no, not really. No, but my, my 10 frame hive is not going up very fast right now. But yeah. The 8 frame, they're in busy. Yeah. 8 frame. All the subjects, yeah. Right. I, That's what I got. Don't tell me. They're going to die. No. <laughs> they love it. They, they love my 8 frame. frame they love the better than my 10 oh, frame. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. If they die. So an excluder is designed to stop the queen going up, so when you take your honey up, you don't have a bunch of brood in the brood chambers. Um, lots of people use them. Um, if you're going to use a brood, if you're going to use a, 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 a honey excluder, uh, an excluder uh, underneath the honey super, it just delays the bees. And if you get cool weather, it can delay the bees so much that they'll start to fill in little holes with wax. But if you, put it on a, a, if you put it on a fine day, when the bees are flying well, and you put in a frame of partially capped honey from downstairs upstairs, you get them moving up and down, and then you put extra frames in that are empty that you need them to build out, you'll have no issues. You've got to entice them above and exclude it because there is the off chance that it will block it. Has anybody ever had an excluded block of the wax? Partially. Not totally. Yeah. So excluders typically slow the bees down. I've seen it slow them down for a week. It can be a couple of hours. It can be a couple of hours. Um, but it can happen. Um, lots of beekeepers commercially don't use excluders. And I'll tell you how they get around that. 
and it's a little trick that we have because of our honey flow. Well, our honey flow is so quick and so fast that in our two box brood chamber, if we can get a decent cap of honey between the lid and three or four inches down, because that's where the honey goes first, is at the top of the second brood chamber. If you can delay putting your honey boxes on after you've had a decent five or six days of the main flow and you wait, you don't need to do the honey, you don't need to exclude it. And the reason you don't use an excluder is because the queen will not walk across honey. The reason we use an excluder is normally speaking, when we put an excluder on, there's brood in the first and second chamber and it's a busy situation and you put it on and the bees start to build it out and the queen immediately goes and finds all this new space. But if you just wait a little bit and you let some of that initial clover go into a crown on the top of the second box, you can put your honey super on there and the bees won't go upstairs. And the queen won't go upstairs. Does oh. she walk across cat honey? No. Okay. Not typically. So you're saying don't use excluders? I'm saying the method of not using them. You have to decide what you want to do. If you've got a lot of brood in the second brood, in, in the top brood chamber, you're at a risk. But normally by now, your second brood chamber is empty actually, of brood. It's filling up with honey. So she's going to take it out? No, no, no. Then you don't need to leave that thing. Don't leave these. You're wintering outdoors, that was today. No, should, it, should I take my clean separator out of the tube and then put it there? Oh, no, no, no. Are they moving, are they moving up? I have not. Okay, well, if they're not moving up, then take it out. But if they're moved up and they're fine, that's okay. Yeah. Now, there's another trick. If, you're producing, if you want to produce a box of comb honey, if you put a frame box on top of your second box of the hive, and you fill it with frame, empty frames with a piece of starter strip and wax, there's a gap between the bottom of the wax on the bottom of the frame. It's just fresh air. The queen won't go up there. The bees will. They'll go up and find the wax and start building and doing their thing. The queen will not walk up to go and do brood up at the top of the wax. So there's also a natural way of controlling the queen. By the time that comb is built out and brought all the way down, it's full of honey. The queen's going nowhere near it. If you're using flow box, 10 frame flow box, or eight frame flow box. Mm -hmm. Flow hive and excluders do not go well together. Oh. I mean, in my experience. Hmm. You get a couple of damp days, it's plastic. Yeah. Has it got some wax on it now? Uh, no. <coughs> is it brand new? Well, I have one brand new and one last year. And is the one that's last year's got a bit of wax on it still? Well, you'll yeah. be fine with that. Yeah. The bees will go. They're if in there. If it's bit. brand new, what we, to, what we prefer to do is wait let a bunch of wax and honey start to build up between the top of the box and the inner cover. You know how they fill that all in with wax and honey? Yeah. When that's filling, yeah. then take it off and put your box on with no excluder. Oh. They'll go up there much quicker. And if they start, if she gets up there and starts laying eggs, that's, well, that's, a, that's a huge mess. If there's a honey cap, if there's a crown, you're okay. Yeah. But they've got brood up in the yeah, second. Yeah, we've got brood. A whole bunch of brood up in the second the top, the top box. Right then put your food in. Yeah. You have to remember that once the honey flow started, the, the nectar immediately goes to the top of the second yeah. box where it naturally goes and it will push that brood down. <coughs> so once you're down this far or this far from the top, the queen's not going anywhere near it. Yeah. So it can pay to wait because if you don't, you could be waiting the other way. You could end up putting the excluder on and the box on the like. Why is, I put the excluder on it, and why is right full of bees? Okay. And that's what the full hive is, Which right? Bee? They're in there cleaning out and doing the thing? Yeah. Okay. And it, they're prepared. They, they've never been used before. Good for you. Mm -hmm. So... Would bees swarm instead of going through the excluder? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the right condition. Yeah. yeah. You've got to, you have to, you've, you've got to know how, you, how your area is. Like this, this guy's flow obviously comes so to the point. There's lots of guys who just put on foundation every year and they beat draw it out, fill it with honey. That's what I do. And I put a queen excluder right off the bat. And up they go. And the frames, what kind of frames do you put on there? The ones that I put on were uh, used frames. Like they were. You see, that's well, the I, trick. I, right? eat, so I extracted the honey. And so there's a trick. If you're putting, if you're putting built, if you're putting 
empty comb on a bottom excluder, there's no issue. The bees are straight up there in two seconds. But when you're putting foundation on or a flow bar, <coughs> bees just say, look up there, there's just this. What is it? Yeah. So at minimum, we want waxed foundation. Minimum waxed foundation. Do you get it in there? Yeah, we do. Yeah. When he's putting on a used comb, is it already built out? Yeah, it is. Oh, so they we'll, don't have we'll go to out the do back that. and I'll show you how to the piece of yours that I've drawn on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they don't have to build out no. them. They can just... No. Yeah, they just repair it, whatever, and you destroy it. Right? I mean, seven-eighths of the work is done. Yeah. Yeah. All they have to do is clean, fill, and then cap again. Yeah. But if you're using foundation, minimum you need to be using wax foundation. So plastic with the wax spread on it. Otherwise, the bees just do wax things with it. Fill in the wrong place. I think you prefer the natural colour. Natural colour for honey? Yeah. Oh, that's, um, just, that's just a good question, yeah. So it's yeah. just more natural for the bees. Honey supers are always lighter in colour because there's no brood been reared in them. When the bees rear brood in combs, the cocoons naturally make the wax go very, very dark. So that's why we use black foundation. Also, if you see eggs, it makes it a lot easier to see eggs. Um, but yeah, but if you were to put black foundation for your honey supers, the, the bees will still build on it. Wax strips, so this is a wax starter strip. We, um, it's a medium size, we put it into a deep frame on purpose, just as a starter. This space here prevents the queen from coming up. And we just, just put that candle, like an old candle, smell some old candles. Take a tea, an old teaspoon and just dribble it in here, upside down, obviously like this. And then slot a piece of uh, wax in, and then you've got to start to strip. And after two weeks of the main flow, this is completely disappearing. The bees have drawn it out, filled it in. This is no longer suit. And when they build down here, you would never know that this was not foundation. The bees. I don't know if anybody knows this, but the bees actually have very little to do to add it when you're using natural wax foundation. Nearly all the wax for the cell is right here. They draw it out seven millimeters this way, seven millimeters this way. They don't actually add a lot to it. They draw it out. Because this is, although this is extremely thin, it's still too thick for them. Does anybody use uh, natural wax foundation with wires in it? I started with that. And you stopped again? Yeah. <laughs> so this, this conversation doesn't apply to anybody who uses wax foundation. Use wax foundation that beats it up there in two seconds. Yeah. It's plastic that pushes them down. I use fishing line. Yeah. So good so for you. Why are you? Okay. Have I had a problem? Oh. Carry on doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Melting and electrolysis and all that. Well, I don't, I, yeah. Has anybody ever done that melting thing where you melt the wires into the foundation? Anybody? Does anybody really know what I'm talking about? I don't know what you're talking about, but that's difficult. <laughs> you, you, take a, you, you take a piece of wax foundation, you lay it in your frame, and you put wires through those holes. Have you ever seen a hole on the side of the frame? That's the wire. And then you lay the wax foundation on there, and then you electrocute each of the wires and it heats the wire up and the wax goes into the, seats itself onto the, onto the wires. Have you seen that, Simon? You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Sounds like a lot of work. Well, I, it is. <laughs> there's lots of people who do it. They do thousands of frames every year and lots of commercial beekeepers do it because it's, it, it's way quicker for the bees to get onto. It's just a tremendous amount of labor in the winter time. I've never understood, and somebody can find out why this is, I've never understood why they hit why do they electrocute that? To seat it in, to melt it in. Because the bees have done over it in two weeks. Like it's firmly sealed into the cone within two weeks anyway. Anyway. Actually this four strand and you used to kind of weave it in there. Like you've had two strands on one side, two strands yeah. on the other side. Yeah, so you which wouldn't you wouldn't need it. Yeah. yeah. I thought you had to melt them on first, otherwise you needed them to build it together that it might have sat. Yeah, they do say. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. If you don't have the wires, if you yeah. don't, if you don't melt them in, if it's too hot, they'll just not yeah, wax it's too hot. hot. It's too hot. Yeah. We wouldn't have that issue. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's the natural wax foundation. But you'll notice it's got 
sticking this on it. Just the wax spray. Now, if you don't use the wax spray and you have only a medium amount of beads, you'll just chew at it. Um, if you've got a lot of bees, you don't have any problem because the bees are up there and they all just work and they start their thing. But if you've got a bit of natural wax on here, one of your big challenges with getting a perfectly flat cone is that the bees, you need to have a sufficient number of bees to occupy the space between two frames. So, if you've got, an, when you put your second box, if you put your honey box on and you're only using natural wax foundation, when you put that on, the, the box downstairs, as you'll see tonight, hopefully, some of the some of the hives are so full of bees that the bees are just going to be relieved to have another box on. What we need is we want the bees to fill these spaces. So you have to have a lot of bees. Otherwise, the bees go up here and say, oh, she's great, I've got elbow room. And they build across this way. But if the bees go up here and there's enough bees for them to cluster this side and cluster this side, if their backs are touching each other, they'll only build on the face of the cone. They won't build in another direction because there's no room to do that. So if you're having trouble with wax being built in the right place, it's because you've got an insufficient number of bees for the cavity size that you've given your bees. That's very common. We have a lot, we have lots of complaints about that. Oh, put party box on, but they're building all crazy stuff. Well, you weren't ready. The bees have just gone up there and they just had a heyday with doing whatever they felt like. <laughs> yeah. So if you wait, if your bees aren't heavy enough and your bees are only covering two or three or five frames at the top box, you have to wait. Because if you put your honey box on too early, the bees will just chew and make a mess. Oh. You won't. Yeah. You've got to have your, your, your two boxes have got to be heavy before you put the honey box on. So the frames, some of the center frames should be filled, drawn out and filled then? On the second box? Yeah. You would need all the frames drawn out really. Mm -hmm. Ideally, before you put the honey boxes on there. So when the bees are sitting outside the hive, Sitting outside. There's no room to walk in. So were they getting rained on like that? No. Well, we had, didn't have any rain on the So prior to last week, were they on the outside? Yeah. yeah. And you've got your honey, <coughs> got your honey box we put on? The suits, we put the honey box on when that happened. Right. Because there was no room. There was no room on the side. We were 90% full. Yeah. And have they stopped doing that now? Yeah. As soon as we put the honey box in, they filled the area. And everybody in our area's got at least two, all the commercial guys, at least two and sometimes three honey boxes on the It's faith. In our area. It's faith. Faith? Faith. Yes. Faith. <laughs> I've got a guy on the road here in behind the Colchester Cemetery. He's told me he's got four boxes on the mic. There's a lot of prayer and fasting going on right there. <laughs> There's nothing doing. <laughs> It's not because they're filling, it's because they've got to get their sheds to clean the boxes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's late. Okay. Even the commercial beekeepers are saying it's... But we did the right thing. That's yeah, yeah, well you obviously had a thing in a pipe. And this guy too, you'd have the same thing. You'd have bees coming out the front, probably, if you had your boxes on. Yeah. Take, off honey, take honey off the bees with flow, flow high. We can take honey off of these by um, making bulk comb honey and pressing and straining. Anyway, we done pressing and straining. When you damage the whole thing, you just press it into cheese pop and you squeeze really hard. Mm. And that's a good idea. <coughs> really messy. <laughs> well, honey production is messy anyway. <laughs> that just seems the like abnormally pop, messy. The cheese pop method is a very common. Not a lot of people admit to it after we've done it the first year. Um, <laughs> or else we can take off frames of honey either with a deep box or a shallow box. The shallow box, the only reason, real reason for the shallow box is if you've got light flows in your area, you can control the bees in a smaller area. Uh, very popular on the coast instead of deep boxes. Um, deep, uh, and they're, they're lighter, they're lighter, they're 45, 50 pounds as opposed to 75 pounds. 
a full honey super with honey in it is about 77 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, the only reason we've got the deep and the shallow. The bees don't prefer one or the other, it's just with the deep frames, if they're foundation and they're not built comb like this lady has here, you have to rotate the outside ones in after two weeks, otherwise the bees will not build on them. So there is a bit of work to do. If you're building foundations, there's a bit of work to do. You've got to move your frames around, otherwise the bees will not finish them. And they'll be saying, oh, we need more space. They've just they've got this aversion to the last but one in from the end. Mm -hmm. But if, it's, if, it's, uh, if it was built, they're there in two seconds. If it's kind they'll be in there in two seconds. So you've got four built ones that you put them on the outside? Outside, right? absolutely. Yeah, put your outside, put them on the outside. The, the built one on the outside, and new foundation in the center. Yeah. Now, any, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, the best thing to do is when you bring your honey supers in with built wax after you've um, extracted them. I'm very, very, very passionate about putting those boxes back near your hives. Put wet boxes back near your hive and the bees will clean them out. Dry. They'll dry. Literally dry. Then bring them in, but make sure you've got screen on the top and the bottom. We put screen on everything. So if you put, if you put all your equipment on a pallet, put screen down first. Then stack your equipment and then mice and moths can't get in there. Set it down on top of the hive like this. Huh? And they'll have a feast. And it'll be completely dry and they'll remove every remnant of stickiness and then you can put it in a bag and store it away until it's spring. So that's on top of the hive? Well, just get it off the ground. I don't care where it is. It can be in a big stack if you want. Just let the bees have access to it. We'll make sure it's covered over so it doesn't get wet. Okay, what about when they say that type of thing Sites rounding. Does it or are you saying mm -hmm. that you could put your extracted honey coming back near the hive, right? We actually want to excite Bobby on okay. purpose. We want to use that to our advantage. Because that's what I've done, yeah. I believe in making bees work. They're expensive so it can work. <laughs> <laughs> um I yeah, you're right actually. So I'm fond of doing this, especially when you've got 50 or 60 hives, it's tough, right? But if you've got two hives, don't do it like this. Put it on top of your inner cover with a hole. The bees will go through the hole in the inner cover, go up, clean all the stuff and bring it down again. Then these guys can't feast on these guys' honey supers. Well, I only have three hives and I just stick them, I put it Fine. equal amounts right by each hive. Fine. That's all I do. Yeah. I let them clean. Let them do their thing, yeah. Okay. They fight though. I had only one comb that had honey left on it. Yeah, it yeah it's, it's, it's really destructive actually. You, have to, you do have to be cautious about that. But wet supers are not like open honey. Open honey is open honey in September is dangerous. Mm -hmm. The bees become front, absolutely frantic. Yeah. But mm -hmm. a wet super is different. The bees know right away it's superficial, there's not a lot here. Okay. Um, the other thing to do is if we end up having a really warm September and you're taking your honey out, if you put that third box back on top of your hive with a sugar with a syrup pail on top, use the weather and the fact that bees aren't dead yet to fill you up the super of honey, the su of syrup. And those frames are ready to use next spring in bad weather. Oh, a new cap a new syrup. yeah mm -hmm. cap syrup honey. A frame of honey is it's like it's an insurance program. So, generally speaking, with bees, hopefully we've got some decent weather. Um, we're not definitely in this area here, and we're not getting high gain. The bees are managing what they're taking out every day. Um, and we do have some reports of people seeing some wax being built now, so obviously we're getting something from the sweet clover. Do you have alfalfa? Yes, yeah, yeah there's uh, alfalfa fields right inside. Yeah, well, that's where it's coming from then, yeah. I always say if we get the alfalfa before the canola, the alfalfa actually stimulates the hive, the queen goes back up to normal laying, so you get a, a decent number of frames again before the canola flowers. And most of your honey will come in on the, on the canola. So but for you, you need to probably get ready because be cautious because it could it could happen really quick. Just make sure you don't have boxes up. And then when you put in your second boxes and you're not ready to take off the first box, that's fine. Put your next super underneath the first super. Yeah, don't put it on top. Yeah. 